In this video, I'm going to explain to you how traps work in Mithras. So let's get straight down to it. Traps are devices that are built for a range of purposes, from raising the alarm and capturing those intruders to killing those thieves effectively and quickly. And if you would like to know how to construct traps, then stay tuned to the end of this video. All traps have five traits. First up is the difficult rating of the trap. This acts as a skill level for the trap and is used when opposed roles are used for spotting the trap or disarming it or even evading it. Next up is the purpose of the trap. There are four purposes that the GM can choose from. These are alarm, ensnaring, maiming and death. Although we might be very tempted to use death traps a lot, they are in fact very rare in most campaigns. The alarm trap will send a signal when it's being triggered. This could either be a silent alarm or an audible alarm. The ensnaring trap attempts to capture whoever has triggered it. The maiming trap causes injury to the person who triggers it. And the death trap, well, you can probably guess what that's designed to do. So after the purpose of the trap, we have how the trap will be triggered. And then finally, there's the effect of the trap. This last trait is what happens when the trap is sprung and the resistant rolls that will be needed to roll or the damage that it can be done. And this often refers back to the purpose of the trap. Now, before you all dive into death traps, wanting to maybe put an end to that annoying character, you have to remember that there is also a limit to death traps. The amount of damage a death trap inflicts is limited by the maker's skill. More about crafting traps later on in this video. But to figure out how much damage the trap can do, there is a table in the core rule book on page 83 detailing the death trap limits. This includes a force rating for traps that fires like projectiles or spears. An example of this limit is that if the maker's skill is between 1 and 10%, then the damage the trap will do is only 1d2, and the size or force of the trap is small. Not really that deadly for a fully prepared character, but it would be deadly to a small bird. Cyrus, be warned. So let's have a look at one of the example traps that are provided in the core rulebook, the spear trap. Looking at the traits of this trap, we can see that its purpose is to maim and it triggers by stepping on a pressure plate. The trap is resisted either by evade if the character wants to dive to one side or a hard parrying roll if they would like to try to block it with a shield. The effect of the trap is that the spear will inflict 2d8 to a random hit location, but this attack can be partially parried, although in these cases the spear size is huge. Also, if the trap gains a level of success on its difficulty roll or its skill roll, it can apply a special effect. Normally, this would be impale. Finally, the difficult rating of the trap is 75%. So when it's attacking, it will use 75% as its skill rating. So, as the character approaches, there are a number of ways that we can use that skill rating of 75% to see if the trap is triggered or noticed, etc. 
So the character could roll an opposed perception check against the difficulty of the trap, that's 75%. So both the character and the trap would roll and the one that succeeds with the highest roll wins. So the trap will either be seen or not seen. As a GM, you could alter the difficulty of the perception depending how familiar the character is at spotting traps. I t tend to implement this because I don't want a high perception skill to be perfect in every situation. At this point, I want to say that there is a professional skill called mechanisms, which is all about the construction and the disarming of traps. I would use this skill to disarm the trap using the opposed role. If there are no characters with this skill, then I would default it to their intelligent plus dexterity. Not all GMs might do this, so I might be a little bit harsh about this. So I'm expecting some comments down below. Do you have something similar or do you have a much better mechanic? Let me know in the comments below using the mechanism skill to disarm the trap there is a time element to consider the rules suggest that disarming a simple trap would take 1d3 times 10 minutes with a critical success halving the time in our campaign i would probably use an extended conflict pull and I'll add a link to that video when I explain what that is down in the description. And well done if you got this far because this is now the later on part of the video. So let's talk about constructing traps. There are two professional skills that can be used here. Engineering for big traps and mechanisms for smaller traps. As a general rule, the cost of the trap depends on its purpose. An alarm trap costs the skill of the creator in copper pieces. An ensnaring or maiming traps, the same but in silver pieces. And those lethal de death traps, again, the skill but in gold coins. You can probably see why there's very few death traps around. The trap's difficulty would be limited by the mechanism skill of the creator. So a creator that has a skill of 25% in mechanisms could only create traps up to 25% skill rating. The time needed to construct the trap could be variable and it's up to us as the GMs to put a time limit on this. However, if the construction role is a critical success, then the time to create the trap is halved due to the flawless results. And any attempt to disarm that trap is one level of difficulty higher. Failing the roll means the trap is prone to breaking and any attempt to disarm it is actually at one level easier. And if you fumble the roll when you're constructing a trap, well, you guessed it. It's time to start again and lose both time and materials. And if you're a really nasty GM, maybe a finger as well. And that's it. That's all you need to know about traps in Mithras. If you found this or any of my videos on my channel helpful or entertaining, please do consider liking, commenting and subscribing. And if you would like to provide further support, then please consider using the super thanks donate button or consider becoming a supporter of the channel, which gives you early access to all the videos and an exclusive monthly video where I discuss my ideas and tax for the future just to you. Until next time, I hope all your pose rolls are successful and you successfully locate and disarm that trap. Thanks for listening, everyone. See ya. Bye.